Joel Zonshine is a, a dear friend and colleague, and he's only been at Einstein just a little bit less time than I have. Um, he's uh, a practicing endocrinologist, and also he directs the research core for the Health Disparities Center at Einstein and Montefiore. Um, and the uh, Hispanic Center of Excellence. He's also director of the Einstein Montefiore Clinical Diabetes Center. And I saw some of the, the people here in the audience include some of the, the folks who make lifestyle change work. You've got a bunch of doctors talking up here, but uh, nurse educators and nutritionists who really work with the patients are the most effective members of the team in this important area. So wherever you're sitting, thank you for coming. Um, without further ado, Dr. Zonshine. I have been taking care of patients with diabetes, practicing diabetes for more than 30 years. Uh, Harry is much younger than I am. Uh, and uh, so what I would like to do is we can talk about diabetes in 10 or 15 minutes, but I do want to give you an overview of what's going on. And by the way, when I started to practice diabetes, we never saw type 2 diabetes in children with the NCD obesity we see nowadays. In fact, it was very rare for somebody below the age of 40 or 60 or 65 to develop diabetes. And so things have changed. The disease has changed. Um, uh, I asked uh, one time one of, uh, uh, not one of my patients, what is diabetes? And they say, it is a disease that fat people get where you can't eat, you take pills until you need insulin, uh, and then you die. So I, I hope that after my 10 minutes presentation, I will convince you that that is not the case. Uh, it is a very complex disease. Uh, type 2 diabetes uh, uh, has to do with uh, fat metabolism, with protein metabolism. Uh, it's not only the blood sugar. It has to, it's a very complex uh, disease. Uh, we already mentioned how the high sugar, uh, which is an important source of energy, builds up in the blood and get, goes out through the urine. Uh, unfortunately, when patients start to urinate a lot, have a lot of tears, it's often late in the disease. They often have diabetes already for quite a while. Uh, and these high sugars uh, is the one that causes the damage. Uh, we uh, already talked about this protein called hemoglobin A1C or A1C. Uh, it is a protein that we can measure and we recommend to measuring three or four times a year uh, to give us an idea of where the sugar is day and night uh, for about uh, two to three months before we do the test. So this test is important and when we have uh, patients, we like them to know as they know what is their blood pressure or their cholesterol, what is their A1C because we want them to live with a healthy A1C every day, every hour, every minute that the A1C stays up, uh, it will cause damage to vital organs, uh, which is the uh, source of the complications that we see. We have several type of diabetes, and I don't want to uh, elaborate into that. And by the way, what we call type 1 and type 2 are different baskets of diseases. There are many diseases that we just lump them into something called type 1 or type 2. Basically, type 1 diabetes is what we used to call juvenile diabetes, and is when the pancreas doesn't make any insulin. So those patients need insulin all the time uh, as a replacement hormone. Uh, and they have to check the blood sugars to uh, adjust the uh, insulin dose. Uh, the insulin resistance was not a problem uh, before. It is now becoming a problem because we're seeing uh, kids with type 1 diabetes who are also becoming more and more obese. Type 2 diabetes is the common type of disease that we see uh, a lot in the Bronx. Uh, it is the one associated with obesity and is this very complex disease that we were talking about. And gestational diabetes uh, is the diabetes, the diabetes that it is diagnosed at the time of pregnancy. Many of these people uh, check their blood sugar the first time when they become pregnant. And what we're finding out is that gestational diabetes, which is much more common, it's about 8 9%, maybe even more, uh, in the Bronx. Uh, it used to be uh, very, very rare when I started my uh, fellowship. We used to treat patients with type 1 diabetes who wanted to become pregnant. Gestational diabetes was very, very rare. And what we are seeing nowadays is children who develop type 2 diabetes 
and then they become pregnant. So we don't only see gestational diabetes, we see type 2 diabetes uh, on individuals who become pregnant. And then we have other types of diabetes uh, that are associated with other problems. Uh, now, the treatment uh, we already mentioned that includes lifestyle changes, uh, and uh, we are learning that what causes obesity and diabetes uh, is very difficult to change, especially later on in life. Uh, losing weight uh, is very, very difficult. There is always weight regain. Uh, changing uh, lifestyle and exercising every day, going to a gym in people who don't uh, do exercise and don't, uh, for many years, have not been exercising, is not easy. Uh, but when we treat type 2 diabetes, we, are want to, we want to treat not only the sugars, we want to treat the blood pressure, the cholesterol, and the weight. Uh, and what is important, and I like to emphasize again and again, is that an early diagnosis, an early treatment, is what is going to work. Uh, medications are often needed uh, together with the diagnosis of diabetes. And in fact, the American Diabetes Association now has uh, recommended in some high-risk individuals to give medications to prevent diabetes, based on one of the studies we did here where Harry Shamoon and Jill Crandall were, uh, uh, are still uh, the uh, investigators in the diabetes prevention program. So diabetes is not a disease that only affects fat, fat people. It's more common in people who are obese, but we can see it in patients who are not obese. And we see a lot of people who are overweight or obese, and they never get diabetes. Uh, we want uh, patients to eat, but eat healthy food. Uh, and we change all the time about what type of food, but I think a balanced diet and uh, the keeping away from junk food, uh, uh, it's a very good solution. Uh, you probably need medications uh, if you have diabetes and we want to find out what's the best medication for that individual. Uh, and again, what we are seeing, and I've seen that in my patients, uh, Harry already mentioned at the very beginning the difference uh, in complications that we used to see and what we see nowadays, but many of these individuals live a very uh, happy, healthy, and long life. Now, diabetes in the Bronx is much more common. This is uh, over the Harlem River. And if we compare the Upper East Side with the South Bronx, we have more than twice the amount of diabetes in the Bronx. Uh, but overall, uh, the Bronx is one of those hot spots in the country where uh, the incidence of diabetes is very, very high. And the reason already was touched before, uh, the Bronx is a, a younger population uh, than the rest of the country, but we are a very rich uh, ethnic racial uh, group where uh, many of these individuals are susceptible to develop diabetes. So the African American, the Hispanic, the uh, uh, Southeast uh, Asian, uh, Asian uh, individuals are susceptible to develop uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, and the poor socioeconomical uh, uh, status that we have, the difficulty in getting uh, food, etc., uh, uh, it's another factor. So again, we do have more diabetes, and we are really, I call it a curse. You know, these racial minorities are cares not only with getting more diabetes, but getting more complications and making the diagnosis often late in the disease. Uh, Albert Einstein, the medical school, and Montefiore Medical Center, the hospital, have now a very nice uh, affiliation together. And again, Harry Shamoon uh, has been quite uh, uh, important in making this affiliation. Uh, Montefiore and Einstein have recognized diabetes as a major problem in the Bronx. Uh, and uh, you already heard how uh, the medical school uh, gets a tremendous amount of research, mainly from the National Institutes of Health, uh, to uh, study diabetes. And we do have a lot of, prob of uh, programs uh, in the medical school uh, trying to combat this disease. Uh, Montefiore also saw the problem, uh, and for the last 10 years, they have been providing a tremendous amount of resources uh, in nurses, nutritionists, uh, and educational classes uh, to combat this disease. And it's very, very unique uh, in the New York area, but we have one of the largest programs uh, for diabetes, not only in New York, but in the country. Uh, and uh, we are trying to do uh, the best we can. So. Uh, these two organizations have invested a lot of resources in combating diabetes. Now, uh, we already heard that progression of diabetes, and when you look at this slide from the left to the right, 
you can see the uh, 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 problems that can cause diabetes. We talk basically about the genetic uh, uh, and the environmental factors that will cause diabetes. But what, what, what I want to emphasize is that very early in the disease, where I have this blue uh, square, is where we can be very effective in preventing the disease. Uh, when we start treating the disease too much too late and there is damage, we are much less uh, effective. And then we see the horrible complications uh, that we uh, can cause disability that already uh, were shown in, in two previous slides of eye disease that can still lead to blindness, kidney disease that can still lead to dialysis or renal transplantation, cardiovascular disease that leads to uh, heart attacks uh, and strokes, and neuropathy that uh, contributes not only to pain, but to the possibility of amputation. So the environment is certainly uh, another factor. Uh, when I came to this country, the uh, uh, 2.4 ounces uh, little back was uh, uh, very tasty and, and very good, but we don't see it anymore. We see these uh, big bags uh, from McDonald's, and how many more calories do you think we have here? So about 400 you know, calories more. Now, we go through these little bags uh, very, very quickly, and we have much bigger uh, than those bags, by the way. But to, to burn those uh, calories, uh, we have to exercise, and we have to exercise about two hours and 20 minutes. Unfortunately, people don't do that. They eat the French fries, uh, and they sit down and they watch TV, or they go to the computer. Uh, there was today a, a paper uh, studying the amount of people, uh, the amount of time that people spend in front of the TV, uh, and how that is associated not only with obesity and diabetes, but even premature mortality. Uh, and this is because we not only sit down watching TV, but we sit down watching TV while we're eating all the time. So. The, uh, we do have, in the last 30 years, uh, and again, Jill, Jill Crandall is going to be talking about that, uh, uh, a lot of trials that have shown uh, uh, what can we do to combat this disease. And again, as in every chronic disease, prevention is very important. Early treatment uh, of only, uh, not only blood sugars, but obesity, high cholesterol, high blood pressure is important. But more important uh, is that the patients have to be proactive. Uh, this is not a passive disease. The doctor is really coaching the patients, but the patients, I always tell my patients that if they do well, uh, is their fault. If they don't do well, is the doctor's fault. But uh, again, we do want to uh, 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 have the patients uh, very proactive in their disease. Uh, you already heard the problem of uh, prevention of diabetes. Uh, and again, uh, my patients are adults. Uh, I always tell them, you already have the disease. I want to be sure everybody in your household, the children, don't get the disease. And we don't realize how the uh, lifestyle changes that we're recommending for the people with diabetes are the ones that the entire family should have. So we want to treat the A1C. Uh, this is the blood sugar, the blood pressure, the cholesterol, and smoking cessation. Uh, smoking is expensive, it's a bad investment, uh, and patients who have cardiovascular disease or diabetes uh, should spend their money someplace else. Uh, we have landmark studies, which by the way, Einstein has been part of some of these studies. The DCCT, Harry Shamoon uh, uh, was the principal investigator, uh, and we continue with the EDIC study where uh, Jill Crandall continues to see patients. Uh, Accord, uh, Einstein and Jacobi were involved in a court trial. Uh, and these studies uh, in the last 30 years are now finished. There are no larger studies like these being planned. And we have to learn what we learn from these studies and what to, to do with our patients. And what we learn uh, is that in this graph, you can see how the hemoglobin A1C that we recommend it to be normal, certainly below 7%. Again, when individuals live with an A1C above 7%, they get complications. And what we normally see is that the hemoglobin A1C is around 8, 8.5 at the time of diagnosis. We bring it down very nicely to normal, but later on it starts to go up. And many studies have shown that that is the trend that we have. Um, what we would like to do is to bring the A1C down to normal and keep it normal all the time. 
we want our patients with diabetes to live with a normal blood sugar, and we can do it nowadays. We know that when we leave the A1C going back up, as uh, I show in the first uh, curve, uh, we uh, are encountered with complications. Uh, complications that, although we can slow down a little bit, are going to be very difficult to reverse later on. We do have a lot of medications. We have very fancy insulins. Uh, they work very nicely. And we have 10 more types of medications in addition to insulin. Uh, we try to fit the best medication to our patients. Uh, so we try to see uh, what is the disorder that each patient has, and we try to uh, combine these type of medications in the patients. Uh, more important, uh, I, we like to, to use this uh, motto, uh, uh, the, uh, leave the driving to us. I don't like uh, patients uh, who want to hear from the doctor and want uh, the doctor to tell them what to do. Uh, often they don't do it, by the way. What we want to do is the Hertz motto. Uh, they want, we want to put the, the driving uh, seat, uh, the patient in the driving seat, and we want the patients to be proactive. Uh, so again, uh, I just wanted to give you this uh, brief uh, overview. Uh, I want to remind you that diabetes is uh, obviously a common disease. When properly diagnosed early and treated aggressively, uh, it is associated with a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and uh, the disease prevention, I always tell in the Bronx, is not if you're going to get diabetes, but when are you going to get, to get diabetes. So we really want to uh, have uh, a healthy life and prevent it. Uh, thank you very much.